Within this video, we're going to cover 10 things that I wish I would have known before I started teaching with the Unreal Engine. Now, if you know a few extras, please drop them down in the comments. I love these little things. They make our lives so much easier as educators. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check them out. This tip is gonna help you save disk space on the hard drive that you're installing this on, which can be really helpful if you're working within a classroom. So to do this, you'll have to have the Unreal Engine launcher open, make sure you're in the Unreal Engine section, and make sure you are inside of the library. Next, you wanna find this little button on whatever engine version or versions that you have actually installed, and go ahead and just click this, and then go ahead and go into the options. Next, this whole list, we're gonna need these top couple of things, but if you come down here a little ways, you get target platforms. Now, you may not be actually sending this out to Android, so turn it off. You may not be sending it to the iOS, turn it off. You may not be going out to Linux, turn it off. You can see, this is gonna make this quite a bit smaller. Now, I've already got this installed on here, so you'll notice it's very light, but I've got 133 gigs worth of install stuff going on here, so I'm just gonna say imply. Now, what's gonna happen is it's going to re evaluate what it needs to worry about and then this number over here is actually going to drop for me so there you go that's one quick way that you can reduce the amount of disk space that the engine is actually taking up and of course yes you can do this on all the other versions too once this one version of the engine has actually been changed you can see that i've actually dropped 20 gigs off of there real quick here's a little trick that'll help you actually get around inside of the details panel or the outliners panel you did you know that you can actually right mouse click and drag in here and if you just give it a push it'll just kind of keep going it's got some momentum behind it so this is great for anything that's got a really long list of information like the outliner or the details. It does not, however, work as of this recording in something like the modeling mode where I've got a whole bunch of different things I can do with the objects over here. I can't right click and drag over here. I still have to use the actual scroll wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a bunch of little tips in this one because they're all kind of related and they happen to do with the wires that are here inside of our blueprints. Now, this works in Unreal 4 or 5, I'm in 4 at the moment. So these little guys right here, these little reroute nodes, these things are fantastic. They help clean, keep things nice and clean. Now, if you wanna create them, there's actually two ways to do this. You can either A, double click on the actual wire, and that will give you a reroute node and you can pull wires off of it, which is really helpful. But if you wanna get rid of these things, if you hit delete, you'll notice that it gets rid of the wire and that sucks. So what you can actually do instead is select it and hold down shift and hit delete or backspace and it'll actually retain the connection. Now, this little trick I just showed you doesn't always work. Uh, what you can do sometimes, um, but not always. So if I try it on this do once, so if I hold shift and hit delete, you'll notice it breaks the connection. It also does it if I delete a timeline. But if I were to connect or try and disconnect this one, hold shift and delete, you'll notice that it retains it there, which is really nice. And if I try and delete this one, it'll actually retain the connections that way too. Now I did mention there are two ways to actually get at these reroute nodes. Double clicking is one, but if you don't have the dexterity to make that happen, you can always, of course, pull a wire out and hit RER, and down at the very bottom of the list, it hits reroute, so I'm just gonna hit enter. So that makes it really quick to get a hold of those. This little goodie happens to do with reverse engineering. So let's say you've opened up a project and you wanna see what's actually changed on it. So either A, you're grading something, or B, you've got something from the marketplace. So in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the actual light inside this project. And over here inside of the details panel, I'm gonna find this little eyeball right here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And this first option says show only modified properties. And if I click this, what's gonna happen is all of the details down here will show me anything that's actually been altered from its defaults. This is fantastic for seeing what a student has done, but also being able to reverse engineer anything you get from the marketplace. Along with that, you may notice that each one of these has got this little yellow arrow right next to it. That means if you click that, it'll reset it to its defaults, which is really nice. Bonus tip, if you click on this, you may have noticed you've got a checkbox in the actual set of words. If I click the checkbox, this dropdown doesn't close so I can click multiples, which is really nice. If I click on the actual words, it'll tick it, and then that window will actually disappear. But wait, there's more. Inside of Unreal 5, they've actually already got some of these filters set up, which is really cool. So right now I have this doorway that's actually selected. And over here on the right, you'll see that we have like general filter, an actor filter, an LOD filter, miscellaneous. So you can click these as well. So maybe you wanna get directly to the physics. You don't have to go searching for it down below. So use these to your advantage as well, moving forward. This tip has to do with moving an object around inside of 3D space and using the gizmo, but not actually touching the gizmo on screen. So this is what I mean. So if I hold down the control key on my keyboard or command if you're on a Mac and I use the left mouse button, you'll notice that my cursor's here and I can left mouse click and drag and actually move this object along the X axis. If I hold control and use the right mouse, I can move it along its Y axis. If I hold control and do left 
and right, you'll notice I can move it along the z-axis. And these correspond as well as inside of rotation. So let me get a little better view here. So control, left mouse, I can actually rotate. Right mouse, I can rotate again. And if I hold both of them, I can actually rotate around the Z. Now, if I try to do this in scale, it actually just does it uniformly regardless of what buttons I press. So something to be aware of. Now, this part is actually kind of cool as well because I've got my snap up here set to 100, right? But you'll notice that this little snapping thing is turned off. So what I can do is with this object selected, I'll hold down the Alt key on the keyboard or options if you're on a Mac. And if I use the right and left arrows on the keyboard, it'll actually move 100 units. So depending on what unit we have up here. So let's say 50. Now I use it. It'll only go, make sure I've got it selected. There we go. I can, it'll only move 50 units. Now, if I hold down alt and do up and down on the keyboard, it'll move along its Y axis. Now this is where I need your help. I don't know how to get it to move along the Z axis by holding alt and some set of keys. So if you figure that out, drop it down in the comments below. Here's another tip for being efficient inside of blueprints, as well as the project settings, and we'll get back to this in just a moment. So if I want to set up a key binding like the letter E, I can just right click and type E, keyboard, right? And it's gonna take a while for me to find this thing in here. So I'm gonna do it this way instead. You can right click, I'm gonna press one on the keyboard and find the number one. Now that I have that, I can actually change this really easy, and it happens to be right here. Now this little button is phenomenal, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that, and now it's turned yellow and it's active. It's waiting for me to hit a key on the keyboard, or I can hit a key on my controller. So let's go ahead and hit the up key on the D-pad, and it automatically assigns it to it. So if I need to change it, I can click that and press the E key, and then it changes it there. You will also find these inside of your project settings, down here inside of input, and you can find it when you're doing your action mappings and you can actually see those little buttons right there. This next tip happens to deal with tool tips that are showing up whenever you hover over anything. So inside of Unreal, if you hover over something, you may notice that you get these little boxes that pop up and I find them really annoying. Um, they can be very helpful though if you're working inside of Blueprints because you can hover over these and they'll tell you what those pieces are actually going to be doing. So you may or may not want them. Personally, I don't, so this is how you can actually turn them off. Inside of Unreal 4, if you press the tilde key on the keyboard, it's the key that is directly underneath the actual escape key. I'll go ahead and draw that on screen now. So if this is your key, it looks like this, right? And it's right underneath the escape key. So this is an American keyboard. So when you click that, you will actually get this little command box to pop up here in Unreal 4. And what I'm gonna do is type in slate.enable tooltip. Now, once I've actually typed that in, I'm gonna hit space and then put a zero in there, and that's gonna turn them off, which is great. And now they don't pop up whenever I'm hovering over anything. Now, if I wanna get them back, I'm just gonna press the tilde key and press up on the keyboard, and it's gonna give me a list of the commands that I just gave it. So I can replace that zero with a one, and in this case, I've already got it in here, and now that turns them back on. So if you need a quick way to turn them on and off, it's really easy to do that using the command line. Now, inside of Unreal 5, this command thing is actually built into the interface, so it's right down here below, so you don't have to worry about hitting a key. And it's the same thing. And I've already entered it, so if I just click in here and press up on the keyboard, you notice that I can actually get at those enable tool tips and turn them on or off as needed. This little tricky trick happens to be a pro tip on selecting all of a specific kind of actor inside of your scene. So let's say somewhere along the line, your student end up adding a bunch of rocks and they're all the same model or a bunch of trees and they wanna replace them all or delete them all, right? So if I select one of these boxes, I can actually right click on it, come down here into select, come down a little farther and open up this so it says select matching all classes or shift E if you're into the hotkeys. And now what it's done is it's selected all of these boxes which allows me to go ahead and delete them all in one go. Or if I would like, I can replace them. So I'm gonna go and select this puzzle cube down here in the bottom, right click again on any of these, and I can say, hey, replace it with this puzzle cube. And it'll replace all of them. It does retain its information as far as the location, rotation, and scale as well. So just be aware of that. It's really just replacing what static mesh happens to be in there. Of course, we can always just reset each of these and we should be good to go. Now, who knows where those just disappeared to? Hmm, that's never quite a proper demo unless something goes completely wrong. Let's go ahead and continue on selecting things. Now, your students may have built something that's kind of transparent, like glass or water. In this case, I've got a VFX that's completely and totally clear, except for a very small little area. Like, there's a few of them that are around here. Now, your students may wonder why they can't actually select it, and they click, 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 and they're like, why can't I select this thing? And some students are like, yeah, I can get a hold of them, no problem. That's real easy to deal with. 
What's happening is there is a toggle inside of Unreal that allows you to select something that's transparent. And you can toggle that by hitting just the T key on the keyboard. Now, if you're looking for this inside of the actual settings, you actually come up here to settings and you'll find it right here. Allow translucent selection, that one right there, which is really nice. If you're doing groups, you also find that there's one down here as well. So in case they can't select something that's translucent, now you know why they just need to press the T key on the keyboard. This last tip is actually two in one. And it's really, really nice to know because it allows you to find something inside the content browser or skip the content browser completely. So let's go ahead and just select this door right here. So I've got this one selected in my world. I'm gonna hit Control or Command B as in boy, and that will find it here inside of my actual content browser, which is great. Whoop, and it's actually gonna be right down here. There it is, so that's my door auto. Now, the other thing I could do is I could just double click on this and open it up and start playing with the code. But with this door selected, if I hit Control E as an echo, it will actually open up that editor right away and I can get in here and actually start to play with it immediately.